What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Dean aka The Blue Crusader and today I'm going to be showing you how to use MC Edit 2.0. So the link to download this will be in the description below. Usually I do part of the tutorial where I show you how to download and install the tool first but this is pretty simple, this is pretty straightforward so for that reason I'm just going to leave the link below. It should have an installer which should be really quick and easy to install it for anybody. But now we've jumped into the tool I'm just going to be showing you a few of the options, what they do and how we can use some of the features in this software. So when you first launch it you'll be greeted by a world list okay so you need to actually pick a map that you can actually use. So basically you can also load resource packs so you can use custom textures actually inside this world editor as well but you basically have a list of all your saves okay and just saves will say the version that they're for so this says 1.15.2 for an example and at the top your version wants to be the same as your map version and then when you found one to edit and you've selected the right version on the software that corresponds to your map version here on the left that you've selected you can press edit. You can also press view as well which will also open the world and load everything inside the interface. Sometimes it will give you a preview image when you're loading the worlds but sometimes it also won't. So I'm going to go ahead and select this new world and then I'm going to select the version of MC Edit to 1.12.2. This is because we have a full preview here of the actual map and this world is for 1.12.2. So I'm going to select that version, press edit and I'm going to load that map in MC Edit. If the newer versions don't work for you, you can obviously load it in a newer version of Minecraft. Now you'll see over here, we're downstairs in some kind of structure. This is because this map was actually loaded using the mod which is called roguelike dungeons so you can see we have the building here but luckily for us this mod doesn't use many or maybe not even any custom blocks so you can see everything's still intact in the map so we're now in this map and over here we can actually view the village if you're wondering how I'm actually navigating around the world I'm holding right click to pan the camera and move it up and down and right and left and also the WASD keys to move around the map so I can look up and then press W to go up and look down and W to go down for example. So that's the basic panning and looking around stuff. So what if you want to actually edit something in this map okay? Usually it will spawn you where the player's position is so my player was down inside this dungeon and that's where it actually spawned me. Obviously if you want to click something you can select it with left click and that will select the block or the surrounding area and you can also click and drag to also select the block as well and you can pull down the corner of a selection which is here and you can select the blocks below so what I could do is I could drag across like this and it will actually make a selection here and then I can click on the corner at the bottom and pull it down and it will actually select these blocks and then I can press delete and those blocks will disappear so that's how to make an actual selection because if you just click on the block usually it will select only one face it won't actually select the block itself you can also select the different shapes so I can click on shape as a chunk and then it will actually select sets of chunks when we actually click and drag on something and then for example we could technically press delete and delete one of those chunks out of the map which is pretty ridiculous if you think about it because right now we have one huge gaping hole in the world which was not there before and if we go down into here you can actually see part of a secret hidden dungeon down here and now we had a normal dungeon which we were looking at before which was inside that building but this is some kind of secret dungeon with a nether theme underground that we've now unveiled by actually deleting that chunk and allowing us to actually drop down and take a look at that so that's how to delete full chunks which is pretty ridiculous if you think about it. Now we have a big gaping hole in the world which goes down basically below bedrock. So that's how to delete stuff and if you press Control and Z that is actually the shortcut to undo stuff so we can actually delete that selection. So now we've done that I've showed you how to select blocks and how to select chunks, how to navigate around the actual software itself and delete stuff. We're going to jump straight into it. So like I said you can select the shape here of your selection and right now it's a cylinder and you can change this and basically this isn't actually the shape of your selector as in this little square thing you can see me moving around this is actually the shape of the selection itself so what you select 
in terms of the blocks will actually be in the shape you select and you can click on options and go to classic selection or sticky selection and there's different settings over there you can also change your camera here and if you keep pressing camera it will zoom out if you keep left clicking it okay and you can kind of see around your world whatever's been totally loaded in your world now as far as i'm aware what we can see right now is basically just a specific set of chunks because if it loaded the whole world at once it would really lag it and cause performance issues you can obviously keep going around the map and it will generate what you've already generated you can also click on overcam here which will show you the 2d top-down view which is kind of like a bird's eye view and it'll show you the compass here and then you can click on 2d as well and basically it will change the view to something different so there's three different settings the 2d setting doesn't seem to be working right now so I'm just gonna go back to camera because that's obviously where our world is and let's just select a random chunk you can press inspect chunk and it'll show you certain properties sometimes of the actual chunk itself here where we say inspect chunk it'll show us all the mbt data and a lot of the different things such as terrain populated which means is there an npc village there and things like that and if you see if i'm selecting different chunks here with this tool it's actually going to inspect the different chunks that i'm actually clicking on in this green orbit here in this rectangle you can also click on generate and you can generate different blocks in a selection but make sure you've actually made a selection when you do this because this can actually crash the software but basically these are just your tools okay so generate you can generate whatever block you want in the game here and you can select the different generation type there's flood fill which basically if you make a full selection it will actually generate blocks in that direction so if you can see here if i just left click on the ground it's going to actually turn all those blocks into stone. So if I do the same on here, all those grass blocks are going to be made into stone. And you can do that wherever you click, okay? And it'll make a ground in a certain direction, the block that you've selected. So I could obviously change this to something else, okay? We could change this to anything, let's say wood. And when I left click on the ground, all of the ground is going to be wood. So this is how you can flood fill areas which are interconnected with each other with a certain block. So we could change all of this path here to a wooden path, which is really cool. And then we could have like this really nice rustic wooden path all over the village. Of course, you want the normal ground here to be grass again because that just doesn't look right but for the path for an example now we have this really awesome wooden path and you can make it go all around the city if you wanted to so that's how the flood works then the brush tool basically places stuff so if i wanted to make let's just say i want to make some lava somewhere okay let's just select lava and you can see it will preview in this square where the lava would place if i select it there it will make just a cube of lava so basically you can change the mode to biome, fill, example like that, and it'll make the certain setting. Or replace, for an example. There's a lot of different settings you can select. So if I press fill, I could obviously change the width of this. So the width, the higher I do it, the more lava there is. And the lower height, obviously the less height to the lava that I'm spawning is. So I could turn down the width and the height, and then we have a really small lava pool over here okay and the length you could also turn down and it'll only spawn one block like that so then we can spawn these little blocks of lava where we want to so that's how that tool works which is really cool that's the brush tool then the clone tool is basically exactly what it says it is you have to make a selection to use the clone tool so you can actually clone something so if we select something then press the clone tool and press confirm you can actually clone things okay but that will clone it over the selection we just made because we didn't place it and then there's move where you can basically move blocks so i can actually move this now with a move tool because this is all one selection okay this is what we just cloned and i can pull down with my mouse to make it go underground or pull up to make it hover in the sky and it's cloned the whole chunk because we selected a chunk so it's cloned part of the dungeon underground and it's actually cloned part of the village hut and the trees above ground so i'm just going to press delete on that this is not the clone segment this is actually just a segment that we've just selected by clicking the move tool so i'm just going to undo that that because I want that to go back in the ground okay that's how to do that okay now I'm just gonna clear the selection so that's basically how to use the simple tools in MC edit okay we can turn up the brightness of the world here with these settings 
we can go into perspective view or we can go into this normal view which is kind of like an isometric look at the world which looks really cool we can turn up the view distance just like we can in the game and we can click on show and toggle which sort of entities and blocks we want to show and hide in the software the time of day can be changed too if you want to have a look how things would look like at night time and it works exactly how it would in the game where all of the blocks which illuminate stuff like the lava and torches they will work and actually give off light in the software as well the resource packs you can actually click here and select and it will change the resource pack so if I go to a resource pack that will change the blocks and click on it here it should actually load the resource pack into the software obviously it will go much slower if the resource pack is very large now I've selected a really HD one which is not gonna work okay and currently the only resource packs also that I actually have in my Minecraft install are actually all higher than version 1.12 so you have to load a resource pack which actually works for the version you're editing and I currently don't have any 1.12.2 texture packs but that's how you would load a resource or texture pack and at the top you can change your version you can also select the dimensions currently in this map I've not actually visited the nether or the end so there isn't really any of the dimensions in the map save data so only if you visited those dimensions will you be able to actually select them up here then you can import schematics for an example to place into the world you can actually export a schematic so I'll go to the most basic building here and I will drag a square all over this building okay and make that selection and then exactly what we did before I'll go to the edge and drag it down and you'll see now that I've actually selected this whole building up until just above the cobblestone block so that's a selection so what you could then do is you could click export and export this now as a schematic file okay and there will be a folder here which you'll need to go to to find your schematics but you could actually save this blacksmith's hut here as a schematic and then you could import them into other maps and place them where you want if you're building something so that's how to export and import schematics really quickly and you can also export the structure block as a .mbt obviously software like mcreator which I've done tutorials on before how to make mods that uses a structure block mbt format instead of schematics so that's also useful but yeah there's some more tools in edits and a few different options and you can go along here and just select other options but for the most part we've gone over everything obviously you can add different plugins this is how you view your plugins here and there's different option menus but for the most part other than that you can just click save and it'll select it'll save your map with the modifications so now if I was to load this map in Minecraft I could now see that this path has been changed into a wooden texture all of these blocks have been changed to wooden logs and the lava has been placed here so that's how to make the changes to your map and that's basically Basically the simple navigation methods tools is basically just MC Edit 2.0 explained and how to use MC Edit in this tutorial. So I hope this has been useful just for you to learn the basics. Obviously there's more complicated sides to this software and I'm sure other tutorials might be helpful with you with teaching you how to actually use the advanced settings and how to do advanced builds and edits but, but for the most part for new people who've just downloaded this software this should kind of give you an explanation how everything works and how to use it. So if it was helpful make sure to like the video and subscribe with notifications turned on for daily minecraft videos you can check out the videos on my channel i do a lot of videos on the top 10 mods for each version of minecraft and the top 10 different types of mods so for an example the top 10 dimension mods or bio mods for minecraft i have a lot of cool videos on how to use minecraft tools and the best mods in the game so definitely check them out thanks for watching guys if you need help drop a comment below or a question in the comment section and i'll try my best to help you with this tutorial if you're having problems Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time.